thyroid gland has got so many important functions in our body. When there is an increase in size of thyroid gland, it is termed as goiter. And this thyroid gland, it produces thyroid hormones T3 and T4. And there is a fixed level of T3, T4 in the blood. When there is high level of T3, T4, a thyroid hormone in the blood, it is termed as hyperthyroidism. And when there is low level of T3, T4 in the blood, it is termed as hypothyroidism. So, some patients who they, they have been diagnosed as hypothyroidism, they will be prescribed levothyroxine or T4 tablets. And they will be on regular T4 tablets every day till the doctor is advised, not till the doctor advises them to stop. Now, these patients, they need to check their TSH level every six months or annually once and they have to report to the doctor. If suppose the TSH is high, they need to check it every two months till the level is normal and it becomes normal, then annually once or six monthly once will be enough. See, sometimes what happens is the routine checkup will be going on and in the past history, they have been, they know their case, it's a case of hypothyroidism and they are, they are, they have been taking T4 tablets, it will be ethroxine or thyronome regularly without fail and suddenly one level of TSH has come high. The normal level is 0 0.5 to 4.5. This time it has come as 7 suddenly and they don't have any complaints at all. When clinically they don't have any complaints at all and biologically when the blood test the level TSH shows more than normal. That means it is not clinical, it is biological mark, biological in such a state is called a subclinical hypothyroidism. So one thing has to be bear in mind, when we have this diagnosis, there should not be any history of severe illness in the recent past. Why? Because if there is a severe illness in the recent past, automatically the TSS level will be high. Now, what are the causes of high TSS level? T3, T4 is normal. So, normal level I have already mentioned. So, upper limit is 4.5, right? Now, let me categorize this into three groups so that you can understand better. The first category is the patient already knows that they have thyroid problem. Second group of patients, they don't know that they have thyroid problem and they will be newly diagnosed as one. Third category, I will explain to you later. Let me tell you about the first category. So, before that, any patient who have been diagnosed as in a state of hypothyroidism and they have been prescribed levothyroxine tablets, the do doctor will advise them, please take this prescribed amount of tablet in the morning. As soon as you get up, brush your teeth, take this amount of tablet with sip of water and do not combine any other tablets along with this and once you have taken this tablet, please do not drink or eat anything for next one hour and please continue till I tell you every day one tablet, this is a routine. So what happens is this scenario, subclinical hypothyroidism, the patient has come to us saying that only the TSH is high. So one of the criteria, one of the reason for that is they are missing their tablets, if weekly they take five, seven tablets or they have stopped taking their tablet because they forgot about it maybe or maybe they are on the travel or maybe they want to change the system of medicine. Somebody, some, some of them, some of their friends or some, somebody else has advised them to stop the tablets. So what happened? Automatically the TSH will go off. Second reason, they are, the way of taking the tablet, they are taking the tablet on empty stomach but soon after that within half an hour they are taking some tablet, some other tablet along with this or they are taking breakfast immediately or maybe within half an hour. There is a wrong way of taking it. The doctor has already advised you what to do it. So what happens is the levothyroxine tablet absorption comes down. So automatically your TSH will go up. Third and fourth, part of your thyroid gland has been removed or non-functional. Why? 
may be surgically removed or they are given radio ablation they have burned the thyroid that little bit of thyroid to make you you thyroid so only you have a little you have lesser quantity of thyroid tissue in your body so it produces lesser quantity of t3 t4 thyroid hormones so automatically the tsh level goes up so all these they come under the first group now coming to the second group these patients they have been they did a just routine checkup in which all the other test maybe it has come normal and now the tsh has come high that means they have one form of autoimmune thyroiditis so autoimmune thyroiditis the commonest one is hashimoto thyroiditis then you have other type of autoimmune thyroiditis like postpartum thyroiditis decurvans thyroiditis redel thyroiditis all these autoimmune thyroiditis they have been newly diagnosed that means at one particular stage of autoimmune thyroiditis they go into hypothyroidism so what happens automatically the tsh level goes up to compensate the patient doesn't know they have been suffering with the, from this so they have not taken treatment for it when the tsh level comes high and the doctor diagnosed because of the high level of tpo antibodies or serum thyroglobulin antibodies then they come to know along with fnac then they come to know that this is a case of thyroiditis so all this comes under the second group third group it's be, to start with it can be lab error simple you change your lab and uh, repeat the test but bear in mind that timing for the type the tsh level it's always to do it uh, always to do the test in the morning say between 8 and 11 o'clock in the morning so i get lot of calls asking me whether with this tablet, this test should be done before breakfast or after breakfast it does nothing to do with uh, food either way is okay but the timing after 8 o'clock and before 11 o'clock is the best time second cause sometimes there will be a tumor in the brain benign one which is called as pituitary adenoma which can in this condition tsh level can shoot up it doesn't jump from 4.5 to 7 it jumps from 4.5 to 70 100 like that but their presentation is going to be different in females they have amenorrhea and along with this they'll have headache altered vision and they have uh, vomiting and the headache will be severe also so the value here will be very high now the third one if their reason passed they have severe illness they have been admitted and their antibiotic everything was going on they were they were there in the hospital for two weeks at that particular recovery period also tsh is going to be high last there are small glands called adrenal glands placed above the th kidney when there is adrenal insufficiency in that condition also it can result in elevation of tsh now if you ask the patient do you have any complaints they'll say no bear in mind i didn't ask any specific uh, complaints i could have asked them one by one at least some tip 15 uh complaints are there related to hypothyroidism at least i can ask them one by one but i ask them in general do you have any complaint the answer is going to be no and when we examine the patient their thyroid gland will be enlarged and most of the time the patient says sir this has been the size for a long time now you have a report the tsh is high 4.5 this normal level of tsh of 0.5 to 4.5 is a normal level generally but there are some centers where according to their kit their level normal level or the upper level may be up to 6.5 so it again depends upon the kit which the lab uses but generally it is accepted the level of tsh ranges between 0.5 to 4.5 please keep bear this in mind this is a third or fourth time i am repeating the normal level of tsh now only tsh is high t3 t4 is normal a generally asked question the answer is they don't patient doesn't have any complaint so the big question mark is the question is should the patient be treated or not the thing is if you leave the patient 
like this without giving treatment what all changes can come in the body they can progress to hypothyroidism overt hypothyroidism in up to 3.8 to 4 percentage patients one two if you ask a patient or the patient bystander does the patient have mood swings we are asking specific question they say yes sir of late yes does she isolate herself and sit in one room for some time does she go into depression do you think she goes into depression they say i think so these are specific questions then in the blood level the cholesterol is high maybe they are taking some medicine to lower the cholesterol but it doesn't come down this lipidemia the cholesterol level is tend to be high and these patients where the tsh is high it can affect their cardiac function how even at the resting stage the function of the heart will be less heart rate will be little lower than the normal the oxygen requirement will be less muscle function will be less and the innermost lining of the artery not the heart the arteries the tubes which is supply blood to different parts of the body this is called arteries the inner lining of that they may get damaged and in diabetic patients there is high possibility they can get insulin resistance and in pregnant patients they there's a, there are chances they'll it lead to miscarriage or premature delivery these are the possibilities if you leave this untreated what happen maybe the patient doesn't know that tsh level is high it has not been tested at all so tsh is constantly high maybe slowly increasing in that case all this can result now the next part how are you going to deal with it so when i have told you that we have so much of problem in this so sure the question is going to be we have to start treatment so in the treatment to start with should we treat and when to treat i have told you the normal value in general population normal value of tsh is 0.5 to 4.5 but in department of gynecology dealing with pregnancy and all related problems say infertility infertility also miscarriage premature delivery if there is a history of premature delivery if there is a history of rep repeated abortion or premature delivery or miscarriage in these patients the normal value of tsh is not 4.5 it is 2.5 so these patients when there is a history like this there is recurrent abortion infertility and uh, and uh, history of premature delivery even if the tsh is 7.2 is uh, tsh is 2.5 we need to start ethroxine tablet or thyroxine tablet or at least increase the dose if they are taking they have to increase the dose and the same patient if they have thyroiditis and the tpo antibody is increasing then sure we have to increase now coming to the next category the general population that is those patient between 30 and 50 say less than 65 these patients if they have any one of the following we need to start one is depression or mood swings two other already they have cardiac problems i have told you even if they don't have cardiac problems they may get cardiac problems so if they already have cardiac problems so sure you have to take the tablet so that we can prevent all this two if they serial tsh checking it keeps on increasing so how often we need to check usually if tsh is normal check six monthly once or at least annually once but if it is it is high you have to check every two months till it is normal so serially when serial increment of tsh is there we need to start tpo antibodies is very high or it is increasing serially again we need to start we need to start the tablet or already they are on ethroxin tablet we have to increase the tablet now coming to the last category elderly patients those above 65 here 
we have to start the tablet to increase the dose when the TSH is increasing serial, serially or the TPO antibody is high. These are the two main criteria. So, most of the patients, they are asymptomatic. So, when we have to start, these are the criteria. So, just like how hypothyroidism is so common, very common, and so many patients they are taking l regularly, the subclinical hypothyroidism is as common as a condition of hypothyroidism. So, most of the patients, they will, when they are taking the tablet regularly, suddenly they give me a call or they come and rush into the hospital with all the reports saying, doctor, suddenly TSS has jumped to 7. So, I have a look, I will go through all the reports, I tell them, nothing to worry, it's okay, just continue the same lifestyle, like how I advised you. Why I have not changed? Because when I ask them, there is no history of mood swing or depression. There is no other symptom related to hypothyroidism and their TPO, TPO values are normal. Their TSH, only one report is high. So, test and come back after two months. Cholesterol level is normal and they don't have comorbid conditions like any uh, diabetic which is not under control or any heart conditions. So everything is under normal. In that case, the answer is going to be no need to change. Just continue. The, just opposite is other scenario. If they have any of this, then we need to treat the patient. Thank you so much.